Well, it's Friday, it's time for a clean up and a clean up in the garden. So I thought I'd show you some of the tools first that I use to clean up and maintain a garden. Oh, my garden is around about half an acre, so it's fairly large, but it doesn't take me too long, especially if you've got some tools to use. So let's have a look at them. So one of the first things you'll need is a probably, a, especially in a large garden, a mower. And this one uh, is a, um, a ride-on mower and it's a Greenfields. Greenfields is a product that was made in Australia. And what I particularly liked about this is that it's got an aluminium, this bit here, the aluminium uh, base that the blade goes around in so there's no rusting that can happen. And it's a good solid mower. Um, it's not a huge mower, but that sort of will take me for about a half an acre, around about just over 30 minutes to cut the lawn with. It's much better than obviously a hand mower and a petrol mower, but this is for a, more of a lifestyle block. So nice and easy. So yeah, mower is one of the first things. Then we'll go to the next one over here. This is a just a weed eater. So you can see it's just good for knocking back the grass along fence lines. This is a petrol line trimmer and very handy. Um, it wasn't an expensive one, this one I don't think, I think it was a few hundred dollars, but uh, what's coming in now from the petrol is the electric, so I just bought this one recently. This is a still, and this is the hedge trimmer, very good for getting up to the high hedges and also um, low hedges, and it's very quiet, no mucking around with petrol. I'm really, really liking it, so I'll do a review on that a bit later, so if you stay tuned to this channel or subscribe, then uh, we'll do a review on that one and uh, definitely recommend that one really good to have is a blower after you finish the lawns usually what i do is to blow all the grass off the mower which is which is handy and um, you can blow the grass off the off the uh, driveways and paths just handy to have much quicker than using a broom so that's the petrol leaf blower um, occasionally we, i do spray so i only use roundup spray when, when necessary, and that's usually just on paths and, and places like cobbles or stone paths where there's an old drive, a gravel driveway where there's um, weeds coming up. Try not to spray, but yeah, sometimes you just have to, and I just usually use Roundup. Occasionally I will use, so these going on to the hand tools, now occasionally I will use a pickaxe or a grubber, especially if the soil is really heavy in clay, but I wouldn't use it very often. Then we've got a, a uh, shovel, Good to have a shovel. You often need a shovel when you're picking up a lot of, um, you know, bark or stones or even a, even a, a clump of weeds. Uh, followed that by the, probably the most used tool that I ever use is the spade. This is a nice Spear and Jackson steel shank steel spade, and it's super super tough and um, really really good to, to have. And I use that all the time. Push hoe is next, and that's awesome to use. Basically, you're just going to go underneath and just push it back and forward and that just gets the sort of shallow weeds but when you've got um, a weed with a say a taproot or things that need digging out you need the spade. Following that we've got the two rakes a leaf rake and just a normal rake very handy for just gathering obviously up the leaves and raking up weeds or bark or spreading out things. Then we go into the smaller hand tools. Hand saw is very handy uh, to have, handy hand saw. And then we've got a pair of secateurs, uh, just for clipping them back and deadheading, a pair of loppers, and a little pair of hand shears if we just do need to do one sort of like a quick small, a small job on maybe clipping something. Or, or like maybe if you've got um, a shrub that you want to make, a, make it into a bit of a, a ball shape, then, then I'd say a pair of those shears would be probably a little bit easier to use than the big hedge trimmers. Um, of course, you can have... One of the things I also have is a chainsaw, which I haven't brought out, but that's used very occasionally as the chainsaw. Okay, then we're coming down to a, just a can of CRC and a pair of earmuffs. Pretty handy to have, especially if you've got petrol-driven things. And even the electric um, hedge trim, I still put a, a pair of hedge, a pair of um, a pair of earmuffs on. Okay, so that's and then the, some CRC, very useful just to put on the blades and anything just to keep things nice and sort of moving and lubricated okay guys there you have it that's my set of t set of garden tools um, the only thing I haven't pulled out here is the chainsaw but then uh, that's that's more than enough to get you started uh, if you've got gardening those are the essentials 
Okay, so this is the one that we're going to trim back. This is a Karokia hedge. You can see it's just, uh, sorry, it's a, it's a Karokia that I really want to be look more like a hedge. And uh, all these top growths here will be taken off and just bringing it down and bringing it further back in. So a lot of these plants, if you don't clip them back, will get pretty big. The Karokia goes to at least about three, three meters high. This one about two and a half, three meters wide. And of course, it'll get pretty wide. So that's one job that we need to do. And these roses, white roses here, these iceberg roses, they've got, you can see the, these here, these rose hips will need clipping back. So that's another job just with a pair of secateurs. The little bucks hedging is still looking okay, so we'll leave that. This is another one here. This is the Laura Petalum, and that needs clipping back. You can see it's getting a little bit out of hand. So that will be on job number two or three. And another job for the secateurs, just to take out these dead heads of these hydrangeas. This is a beautiful hydrangea that I've just got in the pot. And uh, well, later on, I'll show you how to do some cuttings on that one. But that's a dead head job, so with a pair of secateurs. Next job is the star jasmine, the uh, jasmine track, the track is Trachylospernum jasminoides. You can see it's all growing, wants to climb up. In fact, it's already making its way up this pole, which I don't want it to do, and growing over the cor this corokia. So we've got to trim that back, otherwise it will just take over climbers. You've got to be super careful with, because they do have the have the ability just to invade and climb over things. And you can see um, the lawn definitely needs a cut with all the rain we've been having lately, and the and the warmth. The grass is just taken off and um, it, uh, it does need a good clip. Also you can see this edge, this border needs, needs an edge with a spade and just to clean that up and we've got some weeds in the border so we need to get the push hoe out and probably spade. Come down here we've got some, we've got a bit of oxalis flowering, that's a pretty bad weed to have in the garden so we've got to dig that out with a spade. They'll have little bulbs in there that we need to pull out and, and put in a put in a, a, a separate bag and get rid of them in the rubbish. This iris here has got some dead heads on that um, that will need to be pruned off. And here we have the dietes still flowering but there's a few dead heads that we need to take off just to make it look good. You can see that it's got there's the seed head those seed heads need to be to come off. And last job that we'll try and do today is this is a weeping cherry, which you see sometimes what happens is you get these vertical growths. They're kind of like little shoots that shoot up. It's supposed to be a weeping hat, so we need to knock those back because it's supposed to be a lovely weeping, weeping cherry. And it doesn't look like it might need thinning out a bit. And there's another star jasmine that needs clipping back down the bottom there. Okay, guys, that's about it, what we've got to do today. We'll get on it at some point. These buxus will need a clip just to keep their shape in. That's just with a with the um, shears. We'll do that another day, though. <laughs>
at a bit of an angle. You don't want it too steep. You don't want it too, too much that way. You're kind of trying to build a nice straight border. So it's just a simple kick it up as close as, close as you can. You don't want to take up too much soil. And then it's just a matter of dig it, digging it away. Down like that. And it just takes off. This is pretty rough grass. And that's how we do it. Okay guys, we're about to dig this auxellus out, so you need to get in there with the spade and go quite far down. I'm going to lift this up and see where these bulbs are. And if we have a look, there they are all down the bottom there, if you can see them. There they are, see, oh there there's one, there's a few there. So what we have to do is pull them out and put them in a bag and, and take them away. There you see, there's the... That's the core, it's a corm, I believe. And um, yeah, if you just pull them off straight, that little bulbs, they've got enough storage energy to re, uh, regenerate. So you've got to take them out and put them in the rubbish tip, ready for the rubbish. Okay. Okay, it's just about finished. It's taken us about four hours. We we'll just cut the lawns. Lawns are looking good now. You can have a look. Boy, there we go. Just going to finish off with a little bit of the leaf blow. We're going to blow down the the uh, the ride-on mower, and then just blow out the bits of grass as well. Okay, guys, we're going to leave it there. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.